first one was, um, was actually a little four lot subdivision out at Mudgery Bar. And uh, it's what I call a vendor finance deal. But it was actually in reverse because normally if we want to do a vendor finance deal, we understand how they work and then we talk to the landowner about how they work and ideally, you know, we form, form a deal. I, I, it was the landowner that showed me what to do. So, <laughs> so I suppose in a way I was lucky. I was, I was at Mudgee Bar, I was selling real estate. Uh, somebody had bought a parcel of land, got an approval for a four lot subdivision but decided not to do it. So they listed it with our agency and uh, two or three weeks into it he dropped in one day just to see how it was going, if we were getting any lookers. And I was talking to him and I said, nah, look, I haven't got a buyer yet, but geez, I'd love to do it myself. I just haven't got enough money. And he said, well, how much do you really want to do it? And he started talking to me and I, I, I sort of opened up what, I, what my real long-term idea was, is to get into development and this and that. And he said, oh, okay, I, I can help you. And, that's, and that was a vendor finance deal. So basically, it, I settled on the land, but I only gave the landowner half the money. The other half I owed him through mm -hmm. a second mortgage and I paid some interest, but at the end. And the bank lent me 80%, so the bank lent me 80% of the land value, 50% of it went out to pay him his first half. The other 30, between 50 and 80%, I used, and that was enough to, to do the works, and uh, sold them down and paid the bank back, then paid him back. And what did you make on that first deal? I mean, it was a while ago, obviously, geez, so... Blocks of land back then were like $30,000, yeah. you know. But, but I, made, I made the equivalent of a block of land, basically. Which is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I suppose that's 25%. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was good. And, and my sister Lorraine had a uh, boyfriend at the time, Keith. Keith was in earth moving. Right. Keith said, geez, how'd you do that? <laughs> I said, I don't know, I'm still trying to work it out. <laughs> um, he said, you, you made that much money and, and you didn't put any money in. I said, yeah. He said, I've got some money, go and find me a deal. So I did. And it, well, he said, go and find me a deal and I'll put the money in. I said, that's good. And I found something because I was in the business. Mm -hmm. Keith put the money in, we did it, and we went halves in the profit. And um, that was a joint venture with a money partner, not really knowing. Yeah. For me, it was just, just happened. Just Keith throwing the money in, you know, yep. that's all it was. So all of a sudden, I've got done two deals, got two chunks of money, plus the bid I had. Now I've got, now I've got a war chest. Now, now, at that point, if you can, if you can remember back. <laughs> not well. <laughs> <laughs> those two chunks of money, how much would that have equated to with what you would have earned for the year? Well, probably back to, if you're talking about probably the average full-time wage at that time, I'd say at least three years' salary. There you go. Yeah. And so you've got to put that in yeah. today's terms, how much that is. That, that's, that's good. That must have blown your mind. Yeah, like a, a full-time job back then, I was probably in that 25, 30 grand a year maybe. Sounds yeah. ridiculous. You'd spend that on a good meal. But <laughs> a very good meal. Some might. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not out on the town with Demnit probably, but... Oh, I don't think so. I know your taste. So, uh, I am an accountant at heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a lot of money to me. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, see, that's the thing, because when you, when you uh, put all this into perspective, as Ian said yesterday, you know, he went through a deal and, oh, I only made $25,000, but you made $25,000. How long did it take you to do that? All that sort of thing. So you've got to put it into perspective. Mm -hmm. So that was good money back then. It was good money. Now that must have got you hooked. Kick, kick me off. Gave me a war chest. Yeah. So now I can do my own deals with my own money and, and I started to do that. But I never lost that love and excitement of how can you do deals with a lot less or no money. Mm. So, so as a result, I sort of made, almost made a career out of doing those. But, but still, you know, even now, yeah, I'd, I love to do the creative stuff, but mm -hmm. I've got my own money as well, so if it's a really good deal, if I've got to put money in, I'll do it. Um, the weekend's been fantastic, absolutely fantastic, more than I ever anticipated. Uh, a lot of work, uh, people need to come prepared to events like this, and um, uh, but be, also be prepared to be rewarded. One of the most specific things that I've got out of this weekend is not just the information I've received from Dimpna, but that information is, is magnificent and has really uh, it clarified a lot of real estate issues, but it's been the contacts with the financial guidance and the legal guidance and all the other elements associated with the peripheral elements of, of real estate investing that I think have been equally as rewarding. And if I had have known this information, had these contacts uh, years ago when I was investing in other certain strategies and doing certain things, it would have saved, literally saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars. So I find that you don't, don't just think about 
you know, what you're getting from the real estate knowledge aspect, the, the ancillary elements of what you're getting uh, are equally as important, if not more important. I've been to a couple of Dimpness seminars before um, and never signed up. I was, I, was, I was one of the guys that always go to the seminar, get the information, and, but always procrastinate about signing up um, for the event. And this is another really important thing, I think. The money that Dimpner charges for these courses, I know a lot of people balk at that and they question the value of that. Um, as I've just mentioned, the, the money that I would have saved from the ancillary information I've received already overwhelms any kind of fee that she has charged or, or could charge for it, regardless of all of the real estate information that I've now garnered as well. So the value is exponential by hundreds in reality. I've always been reasonably confident with it, but when things go pear-shaped, it knocks your confidence back down, you get back up and you go again. We've all had pear-shaped investments, well most people have. Uh, now getting this information and knowing that um, the information has progressed so much over the years, um, getting it at the cutting edge, getting it right at the front edge of what's happening now in today's market in real time, that's what lifts your confidence. You know now that you can step out and you can work with the right people and you can get the right properties, do the right thing with them and be guided along the way. Uh, you can't put a value on that if you're an active property investor. As I sit here today, there was just no other way to do it. Get the information as quickly as you can, get the right information, engage the right people and activate yourself into the market. One of the most, I guess, illuminating things that have come out of this weekend has been that there are really good analysis tools available to you now and professional people who have tried and tested these, these tools that you can actually engage and work with just to go from point A to point B, not just quick, you know, with speed and, and more quickly, but with a lot more confidence and clarity. And that's worth volumes. If you're considering property investing, Go to a one day seminar, sign up at the end of the day, get the information, and then if you can't go and do something constructive with it, it's your own fault, because this is the best information available that I've found.